Hey there, welcome back to Watercraft TV. This is Adam Jones and Sam Taylor, who you probably recognise from the Perch film that we did earlier on in the year. If you haven't seen it, it's on the channel. Thanks very much for coming back to another YouTube video. Um, we have been out this spring targeting Tench, and today we wanted to tell you a little bit about a few of the sessions that we've had this year. Um, some of the fish that we've caught, including three pretty ridiculous fish. Lots of very, very good fish, but three pretty ridiculous fish that came to Sam later on in this story so stick around for those we've got loads of cool shots of those some very very big carp and an extremely special tench so uh, we'll take you on a bit of a journey for the next 10 minutes if you'll stick with us and tell you a little bit about the the campaign i guess that we've had over the last few years for a double figure tench and very specifically the last few sessions we've had this year so this spring we've had a lot of float sessions for tench you may have seen there's a little float fishing video um, on the channel as well and we've just been geeking out on all things tench both speci tench sessions and float fishing for them as well as some cruise fishing as well and it's been a really nice spring hasn't it yeah it has i've never put anywhere near as much time into tench in my life before or anything actually other than perch i've never really focused as much as i have uh it's been cool to do like you said float fishing speci tenching with the feeders and stuff as well like I've loved it. It's the best time of year outside of fishing, and then to bring tench fishing into it makes it even better. So it is, and like Sam says, it's it's such a nice time to be on the bank. It's such yeah. a nice time to spend out in the bivy with the sunrises and the birds waking up, and it's a really really cool time of year to be fishing. Um, generally, I mean, this year started off pretty rough. The start of this yeah. spring has just gone on forever. We've had some amazing weather days latterly. We're now in the middle of June, um, but I'm sure you can all cast your minds back to. <laughs> Uh, April when we started tench fishing and to be honest it felt way too early um, we'll talk about that in a minute so I guess tench wise um, I've been fishing from tench all my life I absolutely love them as a species and maybe three or four years ago we went on our first um, speci tench session at Linea yeah um, first yeah. time you got the rods out and you know scaled things down from carp fishing I don't think even then you could quite fully scale down still no. had one carp rod out one yeah. tench rod out my mind was still set on a 40 pound carp in the back of my mind yeah um, but yeah it's kind of it's gone from there basically so we had a, a really cool session in a double peg on one of our favorite lakes at Linea um, caught quite a few fish Sam didn't catch <laughs> anything. Didn't, didn't catch anything in that 48 <laughs> hours, um, which is yeah. a bit of a you know it's a it's a running theme up until yeah with tench yeah with up, tench. up until the end just tench. <laughs> yeah with this tench campaign <laughs> just yeah, tench, yeah. Um, and uh, you know it's we've put in quite a lot of hours um, as time's gone on but this double peg session three or four years ago That's um, where it started is really. where it all kicked off and even though you didn't catch any on your side. We caught tench on that session. I think eight tench on that one. Yeah. And it kind of set a fire of, right, we're going to go out and give this a proper go. And a few years later, down the line, we finally we managed are. to get some time to do it. So we've had a few sessions, but two decent, just over 48 hour proper. stints on yeah. the lake. Um, one very early on and one slightly later on. The early one, very, very briefly, was very hard. We were in a very muddy swim. It was a combination of Glastonbury Festival without the music and trench. <laughs> trench warfare, warfare. Um, yeah. you know there was this much water on the peg the entire time you couldn't put anything down no. in wellies the whole time it was grim it was cold I think it was like eight degrees one of the days eight oh. degrees one day 16 degrees uh, the next day wind directions all over the place um, we well, battled it out for and we, and we were fishing 16 wraps which for me is further than I've ever fished before yeah with, six, 16 wraps <laughs> with so light like, tench rods yeah. it was tough it was all tough. of it together was difficult but it was a good session um, in that we got the rods out and persevered and all of those things were great yeah um, but we only managed two fish I had a five pound a mid five pounder yeah um, in the evening and then Late in the night, I had a nine pound, two ounce, lovely tench, amazing fish, which we'll come back to in a minute, a fish that we now know quite well. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a good session to get the rods out, but bloody hell was it difficult. Oh man, it was tough. Um, and, but you've got to go through the tough sessions and specifically Sam has got to go through the tough sessions to this point to put into context how ridiculous the second session was. So that was our, our first session, like I said, we, we did have a couple of fish. They were gorgeous. We did put a lot of time in. We, we fished well. We fished at a distance. Yeah. Um, we were on a, a decent spot, which we found us, you know, all of that stuff is good. 
but it was very very difficult so we went home um feeling a little bit battered um yeah and it is amazing being out this time of year for tench but it is nice to have three or four bites in the morning three or four bites in the evening or more um and be active and warm and have a few beers in the evening yeah, and have yeah, a barbecue exactly. that's probably 50 percent of the enjoyment of going out in these sessions and that session was definitely not that we were wrapped up and it felt pretty baltic yeah. so a short month later we're back on the lake um back in the swim where it all started so we're on peg four and five of this particular lake in the first session we uh we had sam on one of the pegs not catching and <laughs> it that's kind of carried through for yeah. four years sam was almost terrified of this peg um to be fair, i hadn't fished it again since but the way that my brain used to work is that if i hadn't caught in a peg and someone had caught next to me i just thought that there was you know there was a curse in that peg i could never admit that and i hate to admit that now but there, well, was, the a was, there was a mental block then we turned up to spec <laughs> spec the peg like maybe three or four days beforehand yeah. and there happened to be a tench angler in that peg and uh he was catching tench and then suddenly the curse was lifted, lifted and then sam wanted that peg again i'd say it was more um, even it was more like i was now open <laughs> to that side of the peg but i still wasn't i still wasn't like confident but now i had like now i knew that you could catch a tench from peg from four. yeah from that peg yeah I was so like yeah okay fine so then we decided to um flip a coin and as with all good stories he got the opposite peg so he'd gone from not wanting the peg to wanting the peg again to then not getting the peg and being <laughs> in the opposite peg um but ultimately it's you know both pegs are good there's it's it's a weird setup it's almost the same bar yeah 12 and a half ish wraps it's more shallow on the right hand peg which is where sam was slightly deeper on the left hand peg kind of going down into a bit of a silted gully that gets pretty deep beyond that so yeah. my side was slightly deeper we had a good bar to fish off and then i had a silted kind of deep hole to the left which i'll come back to in a minute um but we were fishing virtually the same distance onto this bar, so we both had rods on there. Yeah. Um, you had another rod out. I had one. I had one in the right-hand margin for a couple of days. Yeah. Because we, I remember we used the um, the Garmin striker cast. Striker yeah. cast. So we like chucked it down the margin. It was just like weed everywhere, and then there was just this hole, like a basin that came up, dropped a lead in it, and it was like crack. Yeah. Weirdly, I didn't catch anything from that spot, but it was like for the two days, I just persisted with solid bags on that spot, thinking it was going to go. And the tents were fizzing every evening. They were just fizzing and fizzing and fizzing. Yeah. And just nothing. Just nothing. And it was, it was a really active peg. It was It was just further out than you could float fish it yeah. comfortably. Um, it would be a cool one to do on the float if you could target it. It's an yeah. amazing. I'd love to see it kind of underwater. It yeah. must just be like a gravel It was like hole. a little highway between the, between the weed beds, wasn't it? Yeah, it really yeah. was like a, a channel running across the peg. Um, yeah. So you fished there. I had two. You had two on the bar. I had two on the bar. Yeah. And then I put one 14 and a half wraps out into no man's land on the, the kind of silted gully um, based on a bit of advice I've seen from Di Gribble many years ago on one of his videos talking about just having a rod that you feed just with the feeder, um, which is something I've taken into my tent fishing and so often um, works just as a rod that is off by itself, a little less pressure, no spawn going over the top of it um, and often does a few bites and in this session probably did 50 percent of my bites and ended up being a kind of important um, factor, really. factor for, for you as well so yeah. that's where we're at we're in the peg we're ready to go um and as you'll see it started off in a pretty crazy way it was just dark just before um light on the first morning and you had a an interesting bite an interesting fight talk us through it yeah i mean it was uh with this tent fishing, I was never expecting to catch anything until the first morning, you know, like you do your 12 spawns, you set up, you get the rods out and that's it. So I kind of tucked myself into bed for the night thinking like, right, that's it until first light, I'll get up and I'll start again. But as so happened at 4am, like just, just when you can just see that it's not pitch black and just when it's like that blue's coming up in the sky, my, I think it was my right hand rod, just, you know, a few slow beeps and I thought that is actually happening, that is happening can't surely it's not a tench pick up the rod and it's just like i mean it felt like a tench i couldn't work it out at first i was stood there half well, naked sam, sam was half <laughs> half naked uh, adam adam in, just in, to wake in you virtually up. the dark and i get out of my bivy and looking at this 1.5 test curve and it's just like dabbing away and yeah, sam's yeah. like i think it's a small carp and i said i don't think there are that many small carp in here and obviously the the 20 pound carp 25 pound carp that are in there go like 
bilio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's just dabbing away and he said, it might be a small cut, might be a tench. He kept reeling this thing in and it was just dark enough to not really be able to see what was coming up through the water. And as yeah, he yeah. came up, I said to Sam, no, that, that's quite a big carp. And as he walked backwards up the bank and I just literally just dropped the net <laughs> and lifted this thing into the net. And I didn't want to say it out loud, but as you'll see, it was a seriously large carp. I mean, in the net, I knew it was a 30. When I lifted the net, I knew it was a mid-30. When I put it on the mat, I was pretty convinced it was a 40. Um, we popped it into the sling, um, gave it away, and... Uh, that is a 44 pound and half an ounce mirror carp. <laughs> Caught on a one and a half pound test curve rod, a size 10 hook, and a few red maggots. That has blown my mind. You can tell I'm out of breath. Probably need to hit the gym, but that is absolutely mind boggling. 44 pound one. <laughs> 44 pound one on <laughs> one and a half pound test curves. First bite of the session. Um, I mean, I, I, for me, it was like, although even though I was there to catch tench and I'd never actually caught a tench, you know, bigger than seven pounds, I was like, well, that's it. Like my mind was blown at that point. And I, yeah. was, I was satisfied. It was the first morning. We hadn't even like started when we'd catch tench yet. Yeah, we hadn't even bone. started spom spawning in the morning. No, it no. was it was ridiculous. So, you know, as you'll see in the footage, just a crazy fish. Um, it was a, a two tone on one side. Um, yeah. And uh, well, as you can see, very very old looking forty four pound carp. Yeah, biggest carp I've ever seen. That. Yeah. Uh, no, we saw a much we saw a bigger one last time we were there we from saw, another angler. Yeah, we saw we saw the common that big common box, box common was it? Yeah, um, which was we don't really know our carp, but it was definitely forty eight or something. Forty no forty six maybe was it? You yeah, so. it was a big it was a big fish, a big big fish. But yeah, this yeah. was certainly the biggest fish that I've ever been able to put my hands on and have a look at. It was an amazing fish. Yeah, um, and like we said, that feels like that was the end of the session. That's you know forty four mid forty pound carp on tench gear. Um, you know, a couple of photos, video of that, back in to the water, rods are back out. Yeah. And um, and then your rod went again. Yeah, we were making bacon butties, weren't we? We were literally just sat there. I was scrolling through the phone like a child, just like, what do you think of this photo? What do you think of this photo? And then my, my left hand rod went, and you're like, that's a tench. Yeah. That's a tench. At this point, I was like, okay, carp, done. Um, let's try and catch a tench. And then it went, and uh, yeah, it was a special one. I didn't realize how special it was until it went in the net. Yeah, really, um, really nice tench, really big tench. Netted that one, uh, you know, building a bit of a, a bit of a habit here of netting Sam's fish, which is a new, <laughs> hey, that's, it's a new that's phenomenon a for me. Yeah, 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 it's good, I like it. Normally go around. Um, but, uh, but yeah, netted this fish, put it on the mat. And it's weird with tench because they're quite, you know, they're not that recognisable, but this one just looked it was similar immaculate. to the one that I'd had in the previous session. I said, Sam, I'm pretty sure that's, you know, that's the same fish, but it looks very similar weighed it nine pound two looked back at the photos it's and the there's a tiny tench. little mark and it's the same tench <laughs> We're on the other side of the lake on a completely different bar first tench last yeah, yeah. tench in the last session nine pound two first tench in this session the same tench nine pound two just ridiculous absolutely like, we, we talked about it the other day in the car like when you actually think about it a month later the amount of tench in that venue to have your last bite and my first bite from tench be the same fish yeah is genuinely bonkers on the other side of a, of a decent sized yeah. gravel pit and the fact that we had that we had a good amount of tench in that second session so there were clearly there's clearly a lot of tench there yeah crazy absolutely just, crazy just nuts so, so um, and that was pb so sam's pb yeah. then we were equal on pb at nine pound two and uh then the session was away and i was starting to believe i was in the cursed peg <laughs> yeah it was, it was like it. <laughs> at this point i was like Whoa, yeah thank god that sam, i'm on the left hand sam side of the thought that you know <laughs> the curse was real um and we just went into the session then. We're just kind of going about casting the feeders. We're just fishing inline maggot feeders, little pin rigs, kind of popped up Medusa, maggot rigs, mini Medusas, and just going about working really. A few spawns in the morning, yeah. regular casting every 35 minutes or so, and just building up those swims. Like I said, my left hand rod just building that swim by itself. Um, I think you had another one potentially. Well, yeah. And then after that, my rod started to go. So then the curse of peg four was was lifted um and you know bizarrely it was that left hand rod that was a little bit further out in the silted area just being fed by the maggots and a pattern started to build that that was obviously picking off a few fish as time relentless. as time went on and it yeah it was you know absolutely like said, relentless that's even the second morning i think in the time that we'd out of five bites in 90 minutes four of them came from your left hand rod yeah and then also the bit that's building in this one is that 
I then consistently started getting bites on that left hand rod but consistently started getting fish into the weed and then losing them and it was a very oh, it was, it was a bitter it was a bittersweet peg it was there, it was definitely working but it was it was a difficult one to get them up and out um, which became a bit of a frustration but we certainly had loads of bites um, and I picked up quite a few fish off that side on that first morning yeah. um, you had a couple more tench as well and they're just immaculate yeah. fish and it really felt like you know not break broken the code but we'd certainly managed to do much better in that first morning than we'd done in our previous session so we both had four fish sam had obviously had the 40 pound carp a pb for sam we'd had a nine i think i'd had a couple of sevens and an eight yeah. um you know we're really getting into the session so going into the first evening again just building that swim up through the day um and we had quite a few more yeah. good, good tench yeah, good you know tench. just a really really nice end to that day i think we ended up on 11 or 12 fish each by the end of the first day yeah i, I think, think i think more between us yeah potentially we only had four bites each in the morning four bites each i think maybe 16 fish by the end of the first day who knows at this point we were definitely <laughs> catching tench and we yeah. were definitely into a really really solid session which was great um so that kind of takes us into the next day i guess um and again same concept a few spawns in the evening off the bed um, I lost a carp in the night. Uh, oh, yeah. Your rods were quiet at that point. Then next day, a few more spoms. Went back to catching tench. It was pretty, um, pretty good that morning. And then the wind switched, didn't it? Yeah. So again, you'll see we've you know loads of tench. We won't go through every single one of them, but we had a really, really solid session. The rigs were working well. We were definitely on the spots. Yeah. Um, wind switched round, and everything became really quiet, didn't it? In that afternoon of the second day, and it it's just dead. felt like we weren't going to catch a tench. It yeah, really yeah. did. And we were working hard, but going from definitely having fish moving in and out of the swim to definitely not. And it can be that way when the wind switches around there, it can just put the fish off. And uh, the rods were pretty much silent until your brother came down, Thomas came down at kind of coming into the evening at about seven o'clock yeah, there or thereabouts. So. He'd the, been there for about an hour. Yeah. In fact, him. the interesting thing about this one is halfway through the day, Sam decided to take the rod off the margin peg and started casting it just the feeder. There's the yeah. there's the pattern. There's the pattern. Out to the right hand side, onto a an area that was clear, but just feeding it with the feeder. You probably had five or six feeder casts onto that spot. Yeah, well it kind of came at around the similar point as the wind started to turn because everything kind of went quiet and then similarly to your left hand rod, I started seeing the same big roll, uh, you know, carp or tench with the same roll, just in the same spot over and over and over again and i was pretty sure that it was solid underneath but i wasn't entirely sure so yeah i changed over to like a slightly longer hook link yeah helicopter setup just so it could fall a bit slower and then like your left hand rod just started firing that every half an hour and just wanted to build it so it was kind of like not covered in bait but you know like you said with your left hand rod just enough to kind of get them down and then get them back up again like kind of induce a quick bite if it if it needed be um but even then, I think it did feel like we weren't going to get a bite. It was yeah. very quiet. Yeah, yeah. It was we dead. had a bit of a weird... There was a Canadian goose that was going round and round in circles. It looked oh, yeah. like it was being chased by a catfish. Oh, God, yeah. I'd gone through the process of thinking that all attention had been eaten in the peg. And just yeah. as I was kind of going through that thought process, Sam's rod, a couple of beeps, and then went. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I mean, the rest is history on this one. I mean, it's, it's like I said, we've been searching for a double-figure tench. Well, I've been searching for double. I'm still searching for double figure tench, but we've been searching for a good few years, and uh, this was definitely a good fish on on the line for you. Yeah, it was. Um, it was funny. My like Adam said, my younger brother Thomas came down and said, "You've got until I think it was like half seven to catch a fish," and I'm going. And I think it was like seven twenty-seven. My right hand rod ripped off. Uh, I was telling him he was being a bad curse of being there because we won't catch anything. But anyway, it went off, and uh, I picked up the rod, and instantly I was like. You know that feeling? I feel like tench are one of those species where you know when you pick up the rod if it's kind of of a certain calibre or not. It's not like with carp where you can't be quite sure. Yeah. With the tench, when they get their heads down into the weed, you're like, that's probably a good one. Yeah. And it's I the had same all... as a perch, isn't it? In the sense yeah. that, and, and a pike, obviously because they're bigger, the kind of cadence between the head shakes is just bigger. So you, you know you just, quite quickly. You just kind of know. Uh, um, and this one just kind of when I had, like your weed bank on the left-hand side, I had one quite far right that a couple of carp had run into, but no tench had kind of managed it yet, maybe one or two, but this just kind of plodded round slowly, just like ticking drag, ticking drag, and it was like, only when I watched the footage back, I realised I wasn't making any ground on it. It was no. just like, just plodding further and further and further away. 
and I stupidly said Thomas to net it. I put him under way too much pressure. He did. He did get the job done. But <laughs> I said Thomas net it. Uh, and also there was a snag right underneath the water, wasn't there? Yeah, there's like a big, um, big branch just underneath where I was fishing, uh, which hadn't caused any problems thus far. Um, but was still something to worry about. And uh, yeah, it kind of came in, came in, and we got that first glimpse of it. And I always feel like with like with an eight pound tench from my limited experience they start getting that kind of like boxy look compared yeah. to like they like they're yeah. just deeper and they're yeah. wider and i was like oh it's like it's that caliber that's kind of what i mean it felt like it was that size of fish that kind of frame especially in that lake uh it was like oh and it went in the net thomas finally got it in the net yeah and we knew it was big yeah, um, yeah. but as you'll see now from the b-roll um and from this bit of talking you'll see exactly how big and how special that tench was so um, what a ridiculous creature, as you've seen. Um, I, I can't believe what we're witnessing. It's, uh, I mean, with this lake, you know, there, there's reportedly bigger fish in here, but over the last few years, this seems to be the magic number, 10-2, 10-3, that sort of size. 10-6 is unbelievable. And for Sam, you know, we've done probably five or six sessions here, and there's been a lot of learning, and a fair amount of blanking, a lot of hours <laughs> looking at motionless rods, and it is so well deserved to see you catch what is a truly biblical creature and I am so jealous I've not got anywhere near this <laughs> and um, it's a truly magical thing to witness feel very very privileged to see a fish <laughs> like that out of this lake just an unbelievable fish um, oh mate I'm, I'm blown away I feel like I've jumped the gun a bit you know after literally five six days over a hundred hours of blanking to come in and have a nine pound tench backed up by a 10 pound tench is, is unbelievable. We always said that the double was the number we wanted. I never thought it was gonna happen this session. It's um, just the most unbelievable creature. It really is. I it's, mean, uh, you know, like I said, it's, you know, you work your way through numbers sometimes and other times you, uh, you work your way through the blanks and get rewarded with the fish that you deserve. Truly amazing, mate, well done. Thank He's got one much, over mate. on me on this PB <laughs> um, and the carp, but it doesn't count. Um, but no. what an amazing creature. Let's get arrested and we'll see you in a sec. Amazing, mate. Thank you very much, mate. So, yeah, that was a crazy fish. It was a crazy fish. Ten pound six. I mean, it's um, it's ignited a fire in me, for sure. Yeah. Um, it feels like a, um, yeah, a fish that I wouldn't have dreamt of crossing paths with for another few years. It's just, a, it's just a crazy... I mean, sorry, I'm getting distracted slightly by the fact that there is what looks that like is... tench fizzing on this lake that we're sat next to at the moment, going absolutely nuts that over there. That is mental. Um, even when we're talking about this, it's still very difficult not to get distracted. <laughs> it, it really was, you know, it, certainly in that venue as well. There's big tench have come out there before, but over the last, I think last year there was a 10-4, three, three, 3, something like that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's really genuinely as good as we could have hoped for in the session. Um, what a PB, what an unbelievable fish. Yeah. And at this stage you think, well, 44-pound carp, 10-pound, 6-ounce tench, you know, can can one catch any more fish in in a tench session and we did catch lots of other nice tench i think yeah. i had an eight, you had, you had eight a... 12 male um which was a pb male for me and the most beautiful tench i've ever seen and a really really pretty one this we, we nicknamed it mango you'll see in a it minute it just literally an amazing like tench. it came straight out of a tench press <laughs> um just a crazy crazy fish and as we were taking photos of that one i think in the morning of the last day getting everything packed up and your yeah. rod went again yeah um and it was quite obviously not a tench this time to you, to um, you I, I was adamant i was like this is a big tension oh big. no you still thought it was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this is the crazy thing about both of these fish i yeah. think interesting thing is when the 20s and the 30s on there take the bait they yeah, really gosh. they really go they just disappear um yeah. so sam brought this rod in thought it was a big tench I knew it was a carp. It looked like it was taking quite a lot more line. Yeah, I just remember when you were like, a, like a bit of massive boil came up, and I was like, "That's that's enormous." And yeah, it was like, a yeah, boil. Yeah, it was a boil yeah. the size of a mini. It's not Cooper. a tench. It's not a tench. Sam was like, "That's a big tench." <laughs> I was like, mm, "It looks like a car park has just exploded." <laughs> um, so this huge boil came up, and this carp came around the corner, and it was just oh, it's glorious. A glorious carp. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. clear water, nice and deep off the edge of the bank. Big turn fully scaled yeah and by this point i then felt confident enough to say that is definitely a very big 30 yeah um got it out of the uh out of the water and uh it was 42 14 42 14 so a 44 plus a 42 plus and a 10 plus tench in one session yeah it's ludicrous um i mean you'll see like we said from this piece now exactly what that fish looked like um oh, that's amazing i remember when it was coming in 
we obviously knew it was a big cup, but because I'd fought the 44 basically in the dark, and head torches on me. I, I didn't really see what was going on all the time. I was half away. Well, you didn't see it. You, were, you had to just, move back up like, the bank. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. to try and keep them out of the weed beds without putting too much pressure on them, keeping that line long, you just, you're kind of just walking back, walking back. And this time it was like, I can see where the snag is. I can see where the fish is. And this thing, I'd love to say that it was ripping around, pulling me everywhere, but it wasn't. It was just like, it was a sight to behold. It was just plodding round in yeah, front of us. Yeah, just going round and round in circles. Just round and round in circles. And just like seeing the tail kick and just yeah. seeing the scales like, when they've got those big plated scales, you can kind of see the scales move, and seeing that in the clear water was just. Oh, it was an I'll never forget it. It was an absolute <laughs> it was just ridiculous. Minter. It really yeah, was, yeah. and like, I don't get too excited about carp, and that's that's not like a I don't like carp. I do love carp, but that was a very very cool looking carp. Yeah, it was a young fish. Like, it was. It, we had like it, a really old mirror, and a, it a did really, look younger, and it yeah. was. Yeah, you'll see. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so uh, yeah, here's a little bit more of that fish. That is 42 pounds of mirror carp. My second 40 of the trip, backed up with a double figure tench. And it's, uh, we're all packed up now and it's time to say goodbye, which ultimately is the best part. So, mwah. Well done, mate. Thank you, mate. I'm gonna say goodbye to this absolutely gorgeous creature. Look at that, look at that. Look at that. Oh. So, there you go. That is what happened on our specimen tench campaign. Yeah. Um, Sam landed two 40s and a double. We caught, we caught a load of, a load of uh, eights, a couple of nines, quite a lot of sevens, um, some big males, some big females, drank some beers, drank some beers, had, had some laughs, had a wonderful time, and are more in love with tench fishing now than we were before, and we we're already in love with it. And what I would say is, especially if you're on the channel and you're a perch and pike angler, which I know many of you guys are, if you haven't got out and done this in the spring when the rivers are closed and you're in that in betweeny time, just do it just it's do such it. yeah, such yeah. a cool way to fish what a wonderful species um they are they are just yeah. legendary species yeah, to catch yeah, yeah. and once they get to that size you know it is it's a there's not many fish that sam's caught that i'm genuinely jealous of <laughs> but that one i am <laughs> I, I wanted to throw him in the lake so uh, <laughs> yeah it was a moment it, it was, was a, moment. Uh, it's a sore subject for a while it was quite incredible and uh, like i said it, it just what a crazy session we think we had 20 24 fish something like that something and i like think we lost we lost a lot of a lot fish. of fish as well yeah. probably you know it could have been a tent it could have been a session of 30 tench eight carp two forties a double it oh, really was crazy. a red letter tent session and um and a great way to to kind of finish the the spring campaign for them sam had another session whilst i was in sweden doing some lure fishing yeah. we had a few more but nothing to obviously rival that that no. double but at the end of the day it you know double figure tench you know there are a lot of like bigger than that tench caught but still a double is a fish of a lifetime and it's it's amazing to have seen one this year and by god am i going to be trying to catch <laughs> one next year um, and yeah. we'll probably have a few more float sessions i reckon we've got i think we've got a few more yeah 100%. a couple of little pretty ponds to go um, and have a go at but what's next i think i've i've never caught a barbel so that is next i think that's next yeah we've had one session on the thames so we're going to uh go and do that try and find a few barbel on the river and um, we're going to go to the y as well which we're really excited about there's going to be plenty more videos on the channel so if you haven't already please like and subscribe thank you for listening to our ramblings um <laughs> on our tench campaign um i could do it for hours <laughs> yeah what a ridiculous session that was um that was awesome and you know like i said if you haven't tried it already definitely need to give it a go next year um really looking forward to seeing you guys on the next video hope you're having a great start to your river season it's so great to be back on the rivers and it will not be long we'll be back out there searching for giant perch and big pike and hopefully a big zander this year that is definitely yeah that would be cool to do it's definitely on the card so if you yeah. haven't already please like and subscribe to the watercraft fishing tv channel formerly perch finder tv and we will see you guys very very soon cheers for listening so tench this is actually your nasty start. <laughs>